Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Were you left hanging and curious about what uh, further happened in my hallway? If you haven't seen the first video, I will leave the uh, link card here. Well, due to some circumstances, I occurred delays, but I will get to that later. I present you, finally, part two of the saga of my moldy hallway. Ba, ba, ba. Let's get started. Okay, let's first ignore this little boo-boo in my face right here. Um, Actually, it's a ridiculous story of how it happened, but my husband wanted to go see the new Aliens film, and I absolutely hate scary things. So I'm sitting in the theater there, you know, scared, and I start nervously picking this little pimple I have here, or I had there, and I did not realize the severity of how much I scratched up my skin into about a day or two later that this scab formed. Okay, no more monster movies for me. And if you're noticing that we have a new background here, yeah, you guys, I've made some changes and a DIY flip for a upcoming update on my bedroom makeover video for you guys. So I thought I'd sit here and give you a little bit of a preview of my new sitting area in my bedroom. Okay, let's stop chatting away and let's get to the story at hand, okay? Okay, we left off after the roof eaves were repaired, uh, the wall completely dried out, mold removed, and the wall completely fully repaired. Okay, now came the time to paint, and I needed to then paint the entire hallway, which runs the complete length of my apartment. It was between two colors. I wanted a uh, white, but one that had a strong gray, undertone like I always say I have a very warm personality and a warm heart but when it comes to my interiors I like it cold cold colors that is and I must note that um, I was going for a high gloss lacquer to brighten up the hallway that has only one window all the way at the end Okay, so I tested strong white and blackened from Ferro and Ball. You know, I'm a Ferro and Ball girl. Trust, true, and proven. I highly recommend painting a test square at different locations in the space that you are painting, especially if the room is very, very large. Light hits every wall differently and at different times of the day. Here you see at the very end of the hall next to the window how the uh, strong white on top works very subtle gray with a silvery effect and matches the curtains perfectly and accents the artwork there also, where the blackened below looks too gray and overpowering. And here at the middle part of the hall where there is no direct sunlight, strong light is a little grayer but still works well with my black and white photography, as well as the other photography there which has more uh, yellow colors. And blackened, because of the yellow and some little bit of orange colors there, works way too blue. Finally, at the front of the hall, closest to the front door, also no direct light, Strong white is grayish taupe, which will go great with the fabric I have chosen for the closet and the blacken appears medium gray, way too dark. So strong white it is. So I started taping up the door frames and baseboards to start painting. Change of plans. First problem and delay. As I was taping and preparing to paint, I realized how beat up and scuffed my door frames and doors were. And with the new fresh painted walls, that would be more noticeable. And the older painted wood elements would then probably come across more dingy and yellow. So I decided to color wash everything. Walls and ceilings were already planned. Now all baseboards, doors, 
door frames, and even the window at the end. Now, the benefit of color washing a room can be multifold. Dark colors can create a very dramatic, cozy space, but a light color can create uh, the perfect clean and even canvas with no color break lines, you know, between the ceiling, walls, or the walls and the trim. All my artwork would be in the foreground and pop more. And my art and photography collection, as well as my gallery hallway, is one of my pride and joys. So, tape off, and I had to sand all doors, door frames, the window, and the baseboards. Basically everything wood. I got a little help from my husband who sanded the newly fresh refinished baseboards. Didn't even have to have finished them then, but I did not know I was going to then paint them. And the final thing before painting, you guys know from my bedroom makeover video that I have learned to seal cracks um, between the ceiling and wall with flexible acrylic. Plus, we paired some cracks in the ceiling. And one over the window. Finally, it was time to paint. Okay, I had heard uh, that Wagner had great paint spray machines and I picked the W950, which was made of two components. Okay, one larger with a pump and expandable spray nozzle for bigger jobs. I thought the longer nozzle would be ideal to reach the ceiling and the expansive wall surface that I have. Plus a smaller sprayer for the uh, smaller jobs, i.e. the doors, window, and trim. That's when I ran into the next problem and delay. That's off. Mm -hmm. yes. That's on. Mm -hmm. That's feel. Okay. Nothing's happening. That's right. I got a dud machine, which had a defective pump to feel the paint into the machine to spray. But I had ordered online. It was the weekend and I needed to get started. Remember, I was already delayed didn't have time to send it back and wait for a new one. The smaller sprayer did not rely on the pump, so all wood surfaces were covered, but not the ceiling and most of the wall surfaces, meaning painting the old fashioned way. Starting with the base coat on the walls, got some help from the hubby, and I used a smaller sprayer on some part of the wall just, you know, to get the feel of it, the learning curve. The base coat would be painted over anyway and didn't have to be perfect. Okay, and then I spent the next four days painting and spraying the hallway. Guys, I will try to show you some areas here on the doors and trim that did not come out so well. Not a smooth, lacquered result. You'll see maybe where it's smooth and all of a sudden it has this dull splattered effect. You know how of a little neurotic perfectionist I am. And if you don't know because you're new to this channel, Sorry, but you're in for a ride. Okay, you guys can believe I followed the directions to a T. Held the sprayer always level at the same distance from the surface, moved at an even consistent pace, cleaned the sprayer diligently, as was said, 
lightly sand it between sprays and before the final spray even change the washer in the nozzle. They included some extras in the package so the nozzle was clean as a whistle. I saw that Drew over on the channel Lone Fox had the same problem when he sprayed the doors in his hallway and he also had a Wagner. But the walls turned out super great with just a good old paint roller. So if I repaint the doors, I will be using just a plain foam roller. You guys, I cannot recommend a Wagner paint sprayer. Not after my experience. I am on the search for a new company and better sprayer because I need one to paint my kitchen cabinets and I will keep you posted. Do Wagner, not cool. Okay, now time to plan my closet and get it built. The next measure I took to prevent moisture and mold was to leave the backs of the closet units open. But of course, they needed some support for stability. I opted for this thicker reinforced construction boards that I had cut down to around 98.2 centimeters wide. You know how those are IKEA um, um, units have a little bit of a groove where that back sits in. Mine were a little bit thicker, but I wanted them to be thicker. And then they, I made them uh, 30 centimeters high, which I placed one at the top and one at the bottom of each unit. And on some also in the middle, leaving the majority of the back open. You guys, anchoring such a large closet into the wall very well is crucial. And lastly, I could enjoy arranging all our clothes back into our new closet, especially my beloved shoes. And if you guys would like to see how I designed this original little mini luxury shoe closet, I'll leave the video here and a link to it up in the corner. Hi guys, welcome back. We are at the point where my closet is completely built and I have basically put everything back in that is what I was able to save and I did declutter some. But I have run into some problems. Problem one, number one, you see this extra drawer here. Well, my original closet just had curtains in front of it and as I designed it in Ikea's design program, I had in mind to just keep curtains. I actually bought new fabric to sew new ones, but as my husband and I were at Ikea to see with our own eyes what we had chosen before purchasing. We fell in love with the double lighting concept here. And um, so we incorporated doors into our design. Okay, I should say into our purchase, because if I had put the doors into the design program, it would have warned me that drawers at the lowest level are not compatible with the door placement. This is the drawer from uh, my husband's uh, part of his closet, but he was okay with the pullout component here for his jeans. And, um, you know, and that does allow room for the doors. I had an extra pullout from my shoe closet, but I cannot spare any of my deeper drawers. Only solution is sliding doors. Now, the plan was to have glass doors on five units and solid closed doors on the last two unit 
in units because um, here is my linen closet and where I keep my cleaning products and I didn't really want anybody to be able to see that. And I know what you're saying, maybe uh, get rid of the glass doors, but since they're up, I am loving them. And especially since I found these beautiful acrylic pools on Amazon, you guys know how I love acrylic material in my interior decor. So I don't want to eliminate the glass doors, leaving me now with three units with glass doors and then double sliding doors on each two in units, so four and three. Okay, next problem. We needed doors for the sensory lighting system. Notice something? Yeah, the doors are closed, but the lights are still on. What's that saying? Lights are on, but no one is home? That could be me because watch this. Yes, the second row of lighting is behind the glass part of the door, creating no sensor blockage to shut off the light. I could have just stayed with having only curtains, didn't even need doors now, but now I need both. Silver lining, the sliding doors will probably work better with curtains on both ends of the closet. Let me show you over here. Here at this end, even with the last panel pushed all the way up against the wall, it may have prevented the door from opening up efficiently. And at the other end, you see how here the track for the curtains goes in a curve around the corner. I probably would have had a struggle sometimes with that curve and the curtains here to get a door open here. So in the end, I'm thinking sliding doors are probably the best solution. Next problem, watch this. Yeah, so what do I do? Do I, I think I have to raise all the lamps now here in the corridor, in the hallway. You guys, I swear, this renovation has become the interior design whack-a-mole. Every time I eliminate one problem, another rears this ugly head. But hey, I'm not giving up. Sometimes you just have to go back to the drawing board and start over. Okay, so now that I've got you caught up, we are on our way to Ikea. I have eliminated it down to two or three different sliding door models, which could aesthetically fit or um, pass to my glass doors, but I need to have a true one-on-one -on -one look to decide. Maybe we will also have a look at what IKEA has new to offer in decor. So come on, let's go. Road trip, come shopping with me. Remember the light from Kelly Wersler? Yeah, similar look with this lamp. You guys can get the same look for a lot cheaper. If you are looking to create a lamp similar to mine, use these wicker shades. Or even these. I was really liking some of the blue stoneware. And the glasses. These are great meals for larger dried herbs. You guys know I love a little acrylic in every room decor. These acrylic chairs are so cute. I always pick up a new small toy for the dogs when at Ikea. 
Okay guys, I had decided on the Berg's bowl sliding doors because I felt the multi-panel design would fit to my glass doors better than the just two panel design of the Grimo, I think it was called, Grimo to Grismo. But now we run into the final problem and the longest delay. Every time I went to order the doors to be delivered, they were unavailable. So I thought, okay, they are on probably on back order. I'll uh, wait and try again in a couple of weeks. But a month went by, then two months, and then almost three. Then all of a sudden, they weren't even on the website anymore. Plus, there was a new sliding door with uh, like glass at the top and uh, solid at the bottom. Okay, maybe that could work, but I needed to see it. Back to IKEA. And we took the van of a friend because I was not coming home without doors this time. Okay, the ones with the class at the top and the bottom, they didn't look that great in person. Thin glass, not beveled. Uh, they basically look like somebody cut out a barn door and slapped some a very thin cheap glass panel in it. And by the way, the barracks bow doors have been discontinued. So I quickly had to decide how I could rearrange the bottom drawers and just go with my original pool door design. It was late at Ikea, store was closing in an hour. I was totally stressed. I had to uh, think of what extra components I needed if I took this drawer out and moved it somewhere else. And I just scrambled, but I think I pulled it together. The large wooden bottom drawer in this unit was replaced with a shallow pull out and this unit got glass doors. The unit next to it, I raised the separation board, placed the large wooden drawer from the other unit underneath it. I removed the large glass drawer from the bottom, again replacing with a shallow one, and this unit on the end got solid doors just like the one at the other end. Finally, the extra glass drawer was replaced in another unit with a wooden separation board above it, and I need, could actually put one more shallow component for underneath, and glass doors also here. That way, guys, I lost no storage space and I actually gained some. Remember the acrylic pools I showed you earlier? Well, I was looking for some for my coming kitchen makeover and I came across these long ones and I couldn't resist. Okay, you guys, and the time has gone. Follow me into the hallway. Okay, guys, you see my closet has doors. It is completely closed here, and I am loving my pools. Mm, love them so much. These last four doors still need to have pools put on them, but I needed to order more, and luckily, look, 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 they came this morning, so. That is something I will be doing this evening. Also, I still need to sew the curtains. I still want to have curtains in front of the closet that when guests come, we can kind of close up and hide our private items here and everything. But I want to leave that to a um, video specifically on sewing for your home decor. Even if you don't see yourself as an expert seamstress or an expert What's the male version of a seamstress? Oh, okay, I don't know. Anyway, if you are anyone that doesn't feel like you are an expert when it comes to sewing, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to sew your curtains, to sew your pillows, to even simple runners for the table. I've done that all for my apartment. The only curtains I never sewed were the ones that were here before in front of the closet. You can save so much money and it's really not that hard. Also, I need to uh, still declutter a little bit. Everything is always a, in a working process, but you may notice the new, my new bought miter sock here. <laughs> 
I'm getting very professional, but that's planned for a project for my foyer. No, 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 no. Don't look yet. I need to keep you a little bit in suspense. You know, I don't like revealing my projects too soon. And I have to finish hanging all my gallery art and all my photography, but I also want to do that in a video providing you with the best tips to create the most beautiful gallery walls and around the corner. I still need to hang that large painting from Morocco and I will be using a technique which um, a lot of galleries use. And because I'm getting limited on wall space, going to be creating a 3D gallery wall. Probably not what you're thinking, but hey, you have to stop by five to see what I mean. Also, these two lights are going to be taken down. Don't worry, they're going to be uh, reused in a upcoming uh, new DIY, new uh, lamp builds. And I have to decide what I'm going to do for ceiling lamps here, but I have another DIY idea that I might not even need ceiling lamps. You guys, I think that is everything. I want to thank you for coming along in this uh, adventure, um, even if it wasn't a fun adventure, but I can finally exhale because everything has been finished and the problem has been resolved. And now I can get back to those other renovation uh, plans and makeovers for my apartment that were planned earlier before I got struck with this disaster. So you guys, I thank you very much for stopping by again. And as always, yours truly, Art Macon. <sighs> Bye. This grayish, oh, you know what? We don't have a second camera set up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me go get the other sprays. And even before the final spray, sorry, something fell out of my mouth. Okay.